Want to improve your print quality for free? With Marlin's Linear Advance, you can do it quickly and easily. Linear Advanced is an advanced feature in 3D printer firmware such as Marlin. In essence, it carefully regulates the pressure in the nozzle to provide a more consistent output of filament from the extruder. With Linear Advanced tuned, you can expect the following benefits. You will get sharper corners on your prints, flatter, more consistent walls, and the ability to increase print speed without as much drop in quality. Before we begin, we need to satisfy three prerequisites. We will need to enable Linear Advance in the firmware, so you will need a bootloader burn for your printer and a copy of your Marlin firmware source. You will need a nicely leveled bed that produces consistent good first layers, and you will need to have already calibrated your E-steps, which I have a guide on popping up in the corner right now. There are some stepper motor drivers that are problematic when using Linear Advance, mainly the TMC2208 when it's in stealth chop mode or legacy or standalone mode. So that means anyone with the Creality Silent boards, this is a no-go. In this video, I'll be setting up Linear Advance on two printers. The first is my Secket SK Go that has TMC 2130s on an SKR version 1.3 mainboard. The second is my Creality Ender 3, which is currently running an SKR Mini E3 that has inbuilt TMC 2209 stepper drivers. Let's begin with a deeper explanation and then jump right into the step-by-step -step guide. When we move the X, Y, or Z axes, the motion of the printer perfectly matches the rotation of the stepper motor. But for the extruder, it's different. When the stepper motor turns, there'll be a very short delay while pressure builds up in the nozzle, and after we finish turning the stepper motor, there will still be some pressure in the nozzle and plastic will continue to ooze out afterwards. This diagram shows the effect of this while printing. We expect to get a perfect extrusion as the printer moves side to side, but what actually happens is we get under extrusion at the start of the movement as we wait for nozzle pressure to build, then we have good extrusion in the middle, and then at the end, there's still pressure in the nozzle, so we get a little blob until it's gone. Looking from above, we'll see that our perimeter has slightly bulbous edges created by this effect, and we'll see this shortly in our before test print. Linear Advance aims to decouple the movements of the extruder stepper motor, shifting them slightly to control the nozzle pressure and alleviate this problem. If it's tuned correctly, we should see these bulbous edges almost disappear. Linear Advance looks ahead and precisely controls the pressure inside the nozzle by timing the stepper motor more appropriately. For this video, we're going to be following the main Linear Advance documentation on the Marlin website. It's a thorough page with everything explained well. I'll link it in the description so you can read further if you like, but we're gonna skim through pretty quick now apart from a couple of main points. Firstly, this video is covering version 1.5 as opposed to the earlier version 1 that used to be used and the difference is there, if you're switching from the old to the new, you'll need a new K value for calibration. I'm showcasing this on two direct drive printers, but it's even more important to get this done for Bowden tube printers. The methodology I show in this video will be exactly the same, the only difference for your testing on a Bowden tube is that your K value will likely be higher than mine. In this video, we're going to go through five steps. We're going to do a before test print. We're going to enable Linear Advance in Marlin. We'll then print some calibration patterns, probably more than once to get it dialed in. We'll save the K value we learned from that to the firmware and our slicer. And then we'll do the same test print again to compare our results. For your test print, I recommend this simple calibration cube that's linked in the description. Your test model should have sharp corners. It should have changes of direction, preferably 90 degrees like here. And if it's small like this, it will be fairly quick to print and it won't use up too much filament. Printing one before touching the firmware illustrates the problem we're trying to fix. We can see where the printer has slowed down and changed direction. There's some subtle bulges. It's on all of the edges of the X and the corners of the cube as well. On the Y side of the cube, we have the same thing. We also have just a little bit of ghosting there from the heavier bed moving back and forth. Now that we have a good baseline, it's time to tweak the firmware. Enabling Linear Advance in the firmware really couldn't be easier. All we need to do is to come to configuration underscore adv.h and then control F for the word lin underscore advance. Then we simply uncomment this line and recompile the firmware. This constant number is something we'll be choosing and it has a default value of 0.22. 
Now we get down to the test padding, which is what we're going to use to fine tune our K value and get our linear advance dialed in. In a second, we're gonna follow this link to the pattern generator, and it's gonna help us make the G code for this pattern to be printed on our printer. Fortunately, even if you don't have a deep understanding of how this pattern works, it's still really easy to interpret and to set the correct value. It's gonna print a series of lines, and the K value is gonna be different for each one so we can make comparisons next to each other. So here is the calibration pattern generator. There's a lot of settings on the screen, but there's not actually that many that we need to use. Our main priority is making sure we get these base settings correct. And if you're unsure on any of these specs, you can switch to your slicing program and copy them from there. For instance, something really simple, I'm using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and I can also get my temperatures from here as well. A really important one to get right is the retraction distance. With my direct drive extruder, that's only one for me, but you'll probably find you have six, seven or eight millimeters on a Bowden tube setup. The print bed is also important to get right because we want this model in the center of our bed, not over on the edge, and we don't want any chances of collisions. Now, generally all the speeds we can leave exactly like they are. You might wanna check your retraction speed from your slicing program. And if you need to check something like acceleration, you can connect to your printer via Pronterface or Octoprint, anything with a terminal, and then send an M503. We can see here our maximum acceleration is there and we can copy in the value. For me, mine is default, so everything matches. Now for the first run, we're gonna leave everything standard for the pattern, but we will come back and tweak this if we need to for fine tuning later on. This bottom section is called advanced and it's exactly that. And for most people, they won't need to touch any of these settings. If you've got any of these non-standard, you'll probably know exactly what you're doing, but for everyone else, you can just leave it. To finish up, we click generate G-code. We'll see the G-code here, and then we download that as a G-code file. I've dragged in the G-code into Simplify 3D just to preview it. You can put it on your SD card and run it from there. I'm gonna run mine connected directly to the printer just to speed things up. Here we can see the calibration printing and it works as follows. It starts on the left hand side with a slow move and then it has a fast acceleration through the middle followed by a slow move on the end. When this main pattern is finished, it comes across the top, draws two vertical markers and then fills in the K values on the right. When we're interpreting the test grid pattern, we're looking for the most consistent line without these artifacts. With that in mind, we can interpret the standard pattern that goes from zero to a K value of two. My most continuous lines are right down the bottom. So what I wanna do is run a second test where I retest in more detail around these areas and I discard everything up here. So back on our pattern generator, we're gonna come down to pattern and instead of having an ending value of two, we're gonna set that to 0.4. And then we want our stepping to be a lot finer since I've got a much smaller range. So I'm gonna put that down to 0.05. Now we scroll down to the bottom. We go generate G code to update what we have here and then we download the file and run the test again. Here's the new G code. Apart from the zero, we can see we have eight new variations to try and this will help me further narrow down the exact value that I want. We need to remove the old pattern and I recommend a credit card to clear the bed quickly, ready for the new one. The best thing about this test is it's over in about a minute and uses very little filament. Here's my second test, and once again, we're looking for the most continuous, consistent line, and we can see that the upper half is still not the best, and our best values are probably somewhere around the middle here. So what I'm gonna do is one final test, honing down on these values here. So hopefully this will be my final one. I've run it from 0.1 to 0.2, and that should give me the required detail to choose my final K value for calibration. So on this final one, they look almost identical. We can see some subtle bulging up here and a little bit skinny there, but down the bottom, I think is still the strongest values. If you're struggling to tell the difference, then probably any of those K values would be correct. I'm gonna settle on this one here. I think that's the most consistent and that would be 0.11. So I have my chosen K value of 0.11. So I'm gonna enter an M900 and that will tell me that it's currently set to zero. And then I can do M900 K 0.11. Now I should be able to save that to EEPROM and it should be stored for future prints. Now, alternatively, you might wanna test this for all of the different filaments that you have because you'll find flexibles will be quite different with the value required. Therefore, you could put the M900K line in your start G code depending on your specific filament. 
then it should be in place automatically for any of your prints. One more thing before we print the second test cube, there are some slicer changes that we need to make. You can see here it tells us to turn some things off. So for instance, pressure advance, coast at end, extra restart length after retract. It also says to turn off wipe while retract or combing. It might be called something different depending on the slicer that you use, but hopefully you can find the correct setting. We can see some of those settings in Simplify 3D. My extra restart is already set to zero, and I need to turn off wipe, coast at end is already off, and in the advanced tab, there's an option there for wipe as well. Here's my before and after test cube side by side, and hopefully you can see immediately that the bulges are vastly reduced. For the Y axis, the result is not as profound, and that's because we have a much heavier carriage moving back and forth with more inertia, and we can still see that little bit of ghosting. Overall, our extrusion is a lot more consistent. I recently ran the same procedure on the SK Go from Secit, and it's Core XY, which means it didn't suffer from any ghosting on the X or Y. Going through this process allowed me to print this absolutely beautiful Benchy. It won't cost any money, so if you're willing to put in the time, this is a very worthwhile process. Once you get going, the whole process is actually quite fast to do, and I hope you agree that the results, while not game-changing, are definitely worthwhile. One thing to mention is that a regular retraction in the slicer aims to alleviate nozzle pressure and stop ooze in a similar way, so it may be worth retuning this in your slicer now that Linear Advance is enabled. Have you tried Linear Advance? Are you going to give it a go now? please let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.